to Holland, um, uh, who was forbidden by Donald Rumsfeld and the neoconservatives to bring with him any Iraq experts. Um, and uh, so Mr. Bremer tried to run Iraq uh, in English, uh, and um, he, he frankly, I mean, he was a very competent man in his own areas of expertise, I think. Uh, he'd been a 25-year veteran in the State Department, and he later joined Henry Kissinger's risk management firm. Um, uh, not an unintelligent person, but it didn't have the slightest idea of what Iraq was. Uh, and even early in his time as Viceroy, he went up to visit the Kurds, and he, 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 there was this big portrait of a great Kurdish leader on the wall, and he had this walrus mustache, and Bremer said, well, that's a handsome gentleman. Who is that? It was Mustafa Barzani. I mean, this would like be like if, if the United States invaded Cuba, overthrew its government, and sent somebody to run it. And, and the guy said, well, that's, that's that man with the cigar there, you know, is, cuts a dashing figure, who would that be? You know, this is the same order of ignorance. Uh, and, uh, and Bremer had no idea who Sistani was either. So Bremer says that he, he announces that he's going to appoint a committee to write the Iraqi Constitution. And he thinks he's General MacArthur. <laughs> and um, and uh, so uh, Sistani issued him a fatwa, uh, and he critiqued this plan to appoint a constitution. Sistani said that in this plan there is no guarantee that the American appointed constituent assembly, quote, will draft a constitution that conforms with the highest interests of the Iraqi people and would express its national identity, one basis of which is the pure Islamic religion and noble social values. He then went on to say that a constitutional assembly should be elected that would draft the constitution which then would be subjected to a popular referendum. Sistani clearly held that the Iraqi nation had, the, had to express its constitutional will through voting, both for the members of the Constituent Assembly and in a referendum on the final constitution. Now, I, I will argue to you that Sistani has brought into his jurisprudence uh, the, the entire enlightenment. <laughs> he is arguing for a social contract and the will of the people. This is Sheikh Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, and, um, uh, and of course, in which diet can, can do these things. If he thinks that something is compatible, then it's compatible. Uh, but, uh, and, and I maintain that this is the beginning of uh, what Asif Bayad has called post-Islamism. I think there was a big kind of mental roadblock for uh, the Middle East and for uh, Muslim thinkers in the Enlightenment, in the question of popular sovereignty. And, and I remember this in the newspapers, and I'd like, like to track down the quote, but I remember that people wanted Khomeini to call it the, the Democratic Islamic Republic of Iran. And Khomeini said he won't do that, and that if 37 million Iranians, as they were then, said, why, and the imam said, Z, then who would be right? Uh, so uh, Khomeini didn't accept popular sovereignty. I think Sistani does, and I think this kind of, of statement that he gave to Bremer shows it. Um, and there are newspaper articles from his uh, colleagues. Uh, he castigated the interim governing council of Iraq, which was Iraqis appointed by Bremer, for trying to legislate on issues. He said that it, it, especially since it lacks legitimacy, since it, is, since it has not received the seal of approval from the noble religious authority, al Marja'iyya Dini al-Sharifa, and has not received the approval of the people via a general election. So Sistani is saying that there are two sources of legitimacy. One is Najaf has to sign off on it, but the other is that the people have to have, to have their say. Um, and then uh, <coughs> Bremer, uh, the, the Iraqi government in, uh, the, the American government in Iraq collapsed. Uh, by, by October of 2003, the country was in insurgency and bombs were going off and nobody would pay attention. Bremer at one point called the, uh, the, the, the council together that he had appointed and said, okay, now it's time to write the constitution. And they said, oh no, we can't do that. And he said, well, why ever not? They said, well, there's a fatwa against it. 
So Bremer, according to uh, Anthony, the late Anthony Shadid, said, well, well, couldn't we get a fetwa from some other mullah? <laughs> Bremer didn't understand it. There's a hierarchy and you can't like just overrule Sistani. Um, so uh, uh, Bremer flies back to Washington and informs Condi Rice and George W. Bush that the whole thing is collapsing and they have to do something else. So they, they decide to put an Iraqi face on it and that they, they'll go to, an, to, to elect an elected government. But their idea of an elected government was Friends of George. Uh, they had massaged into being these provincial councils in these provinces of Iraq, and they said the provincial councils would elect a parliament, which then would elect a prime minister. So the, the elector would be the Iraqi notables who had already announced that they're willing to collaborate with the Americans. And boy, was Sistani man. In response to the questions of Anthony Shadid of the Washington Post, he gave his most explicit fatwa yet, responding to Bremer's council-based plan. He said, the instrumentality envisaged in it for electing the members of the transitional legislature does not guarantee the formation of a parliament that truly represents the Iraqi people. It must be changed to some other method which would guarantee it, and that is direct elections such that the parliament would derive from the will of the Iraqis and would represent them in a just manner and will safeguard it from any challenge to its legitimacy. This is what he says in Arabic. Al-Hukuma al-Shari'ya munbathaka min al-Iradi tashab al-Iraqi. Legitimate government derives from the will of the Iraqi people. So I, I, I really, I, can, I can't find anything like that in the Shiite sources. I mean, this is really a departure, this, this open, uh, un, unqualified embrace of the idea of popular sovereignty is really quite remarkable. And I think a big turning point. Um, now, I mean, there are these other sources where, you know, what would be the role of Najaf in all this is that they would give fatwas, they would persuade the Muslims to do the right thing, they would, they would intervene. And I made an analogy that, you know, back in, in the early 20th century, Yates complained that like when the, uh, the, the uh, Irish parliament considered uh, whether to have divorce or not, the, the, the Irish Catholic hierarchy intervened and said no, and, and, and parliament folded at that time, and, and Yates was furious. But that's the, kind of, that's the kind of system that I think that, that, that Sistani is advocating. It would be one where there is popular sovereignty, there's democracy, there's an elected parliament, if an issue came up that affected Islamic society, then Najaf would give fatwas and would politic and would try to intervene to try to get, the, cajole the parliament into doing the right thing. But not through dictatorship, not through issue, issuing a, a, an order. Uh, and just to say that uh, when, C, when, when the Bush administration seemed as though it might pay no attention to Sistani, uh, he um, arranged for demonstrations, first in Basra and then in Baghdad. These were the largest demonstrations held in Iraq since the great communist demonstrations of 1959 uh, that, uh, against the, the Qasim government refusal to involve the communists. The, the, nothing this big had happened in Iraq in the meantime. And the Bush administration immediately folded and said, yes, yes, we'll have elections. And of course, Sistani arranged for, uh, for the, the Shiites to gather together into one party, and they won those elections in 2005. But I see this very complex interaction of the erudite jurisprudence and the consideration of what is the role of uh, the faqih, of, of the jurisprudent uh, in, in this system with a very interesting set of hybridities around popular sovereignty, the enlightenment, and, 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 and modern nationalism uh, in which I think Sistani really has done some pioneering work and now I, you know, I, I see evidence of it and nobody will admit it, but I think when you read uh, some of the statements of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, they followed all of those controversies, and I think they, they, they may be also a little bit, they won't admit it, but they, they might be a little bit influenced by, by some of these uh, ideas of Sistani. They want to attribute them all to Erdogan in Turkey. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much.